So your pastor's not perfect. Uh, in the epistle lesson in this, the third week in Advent, uh, Paul writes, this is how one should regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required of stewards that they be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or any human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself, for I am not aware of anything against myself, but I am not thereby acquitted. It is the Lord who judges me. And that's terrifying because I might be able to hide some stuff from y'all, but Lord have mercy on me, a sinner. God actually sees the stuff that I hide. Our hope for the church to endure in a world that is all too full of trauma and sinners who cause it and sinners who wear these things who cause it is only that there is mercy for sinners. This is how one should regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Paul wants to stake his reputation not on himself, not on his works, not on what he has done to help people or who he has avoided hurting, but that God wants to work through something so wrecked by sin as him, as me, as your pastor. If you're looking for a perfect pastor, you're never going to find one. If you are looking for a pastor who is without sin, you're never going to find one. This isn't okay. It doesn't mean nobody's perfect, just deal with it. It's Lord have mercy on us sinners, but he does. This, this has to be the thing that sustains the church in these dark days. There cannot be a, a society, an institution, a, a, a church family built upon everybody just getting along because that means you have to hide the bodies. That means you have to bury the sins. And our Lord actually just wants to confront them and forgive them. This is how one should regard us, as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Your pastor's like the altar, the table. They set the body and blood on him. That's what it's good for. That's what your pastor's for. He gives you the gifts of Jesus, and he desperately needs them himself. This Advent season, our Lord actually shows up. And as one of the stewards of the mysteries of God, that's actually a little bit terrifying because if it's based on my works, I am lost. Lord, have mercy on us sinners. We don't pronounce judgment before the time, before the Lord comes, who will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and disclose the purposes of the heart. But the epistle lesson close is funny. Paul, as he sort of lays, lays this, this threat out, even as he finishes a chapter on not boasting in yourself, he continues to say, then each one will receive his commendation from God. Sinners are forgiven. This is our stance. This is our hope. The sinners are forgiven. None of us have earned it. Jesus shows up, though, not to bring wrath, not to just bring the things to light and then laugh and then rejoice that the fact that everybody's been hurt by each other, but to forgive and to pardon and to gather us into his kingdom that would be knit together not on our ability to get along, but on his ability to nurture, to forgive, and to save. Lord, let the, ever, let the church ever be built on this. What do you value? At Concordia University, Nebraska, we value the equipping of church workers for lives of service to both church and world. In a culture where our faith can often be met with derision, our world needs ardent Christian leaders to rise to the helm and steer the next generation of Christ followers into new territory. You have the God-given gifts. We have the tools to uncover and develop them. We are Nebraska's university with values.